welcome to my review of Primeval Series 3, Episode 3. So, yeah, and apologies for the, the wet hair, I've just come out of the shower, so, <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, Episode 3. The plot is that um, an anomaly opens in a hospital in London, and um, Connor, Abby, Cutter, and Becca go to investigate the anomaly, um, and these little tiny, sort of, I don't know what kind of creatures they are, but they're kind of like these cute little, I actually don't know what they are, I can't remember the word to describe them, but they're these really sort of cute little creatures, and um, there is also this woman who's giving birth, so Cutter and Abby have to assist with that. Um, <clears throat> meanwhile... Jenny is, ha, has feelings for, for Cutter, and um, she's talking to Sarah about this. Um, Helen, Helen is on her quest to find um, the artifact, or find out what it means, so she it breaks into the Ark, captures the team, and clones Nick. She has a duplicate of Nick to basically go in there and find out what's going on. But yeah, then they break into the Ark, and then all hell breaks loose, and um, the duplicate the duplicate of Cutter decides to blow up the Ark, and there we go, we go into episode 3. That's pretty much it. Um, <clears throat> now, yeah, obviously this this is one of the most controversial Primeval episodes, um, the, obviously the ending, but I'll get onto that later. Um, I like this episode. It was good. Um, I don't think it's as authentic as episode 2. I mean, that one was really quite good. I mean, with the gremlin and everything. Um, Episode 3 um, has some great moments. The, the the first half of the episode is sort of filler, I suppose, but it's it's lovely filler. It's lovely filler because, you know, um, we have some of the more lighter moments, some of the comedy, like um, when, when Cutter says, how many babies have you delivered, Abby? And she's like, dozens. And the woman says, what kind? And then Abby's like, oh, um, zebras, giraffes, lions. <laughs> but yeah... <laughs> And, um, yeah, the Daik Dons, which are the little walrus, I don't know what kind of creatures they are, look like, but they're, they're called Daik Dons. When they come through, they're, they're, they're just cute. They're, they're just cute. It's nice to have a, a creature in Primeval that's not a threat. It's nice to have a creature that's actually kind of lovable and social, as well as Rex, obviously. But, um, yeah, and, um, so that's all really good. Um, it's interesting to see also Jenny starts to like Cutter, um, but she's confused as to whether he actually likes her or this Claudia Brown that she, or Cl Claudia, who um obviously she apparently is the same person. So yeah, that's all a bit awkward, and Sarah's trying to uh, trying to help her with that. Um, <clears throat> Lester gets involved too, which is nice. Um, I think one of the best things I can say about this episode is that Captain Becker gets more to do. He's actually a bit more involved in the action. He doesn't just stay in the arc. Um, He's, he's actually there, and he's doing something. Like, the scene when um, Connor and Becca have to take the disc and put it in the laptop, um, they've recoded Helen's voice, and, um, like, Becca's kicking that shit out of that cleaner guy. Um, it's nice to actually see some more physical action as well, like, like as in, like, just between man-to-man, -man, you know, one-on-one, -on -one, not, not just with, you know, the creatures. Um, so I thought that was an interesting aspect of the episode, how we could actually see some, like, physical fighting from, especially from... Becca, you know, that was that was good. Um, but yeah, uh, the second half of the episode leaves a lot to be desired. It is um, it is a good episode, but I mean, when Helen breaks into the Ark to um, try and discover the meaning of, of the artifact, obviously, and then she captures the team, it all seems a bit unnecessary, doesn't it? Like, yeah, she could just sneak in herself. Like, as one of the workers, like, but yeah, no, um, yeah, so there's some good drama between Helen and Nick, and also when they, she, he was like, you killed Stephen, and, um, she, she was like, no, Nick, you killed Stephen, so there's all that mention about Stephen, and he's like, you haven't, don't, don't tell me you've cloned Stephen as well, so, yeah, Helen's been cloning a lot of people, I don't know how, they never really explain how she's done it, but, um, yeah, obviously that cleaner guy, his duplicates reappear again, um, um, Lester actually throws a punch as well, which is nice. Lester, again, gets involved in the action, uh, briefly. Uh, I love his line, 
um, at the beginning when when he sees the duplicate du duplicate clone of Cutter, um, he's uh, he's like, note to self: arrange all mental health mental health checkups every morning for all staff. <laughs> well, that was pretty funny. <laughs> oh, I mean, um, I mean, the episode has its dramatic moments, like obviously when the arc gets broken into and the arc blows up essentially. Um, uh, the clone of Cutter says to Nick save yourself and then Nick we see that shot of Nick running out and then the arc the, the, the destruction behind him um, that's all rather intense and that's rather well done and um, yeah I mean there's not really much in the first half of the episode worth talking about because the main focus of this sort of actual story arc is in the second half of the episode it feels like two different episodes kind of clumped together as one like two different like half of an episode was written and then they wrote that half of the episode and then they just thought, oh, let's clump it together as episode three. Yeah, um, obviously the biggest, biggest issue with this episode is the death of Nick Cutter. Now, this has been tossed around a lot throughout the reviews and, the, and, and such. Um, whilst I'll say that the death of Nick Cutter in terms of the direction was handled well like it was a good scene it was a really good scene and it was very hard hitting and it was it was really good for what it was but the problem is it's ill timed it is ill timed to the highest degree because i mean it's episode 3 of a 10 part series and you're killing off the main character in the third episode what that to me baffles me um I mean, they could have had a great story arc for Nick throughout Series 3, but no, they just kill him off in, in Episode 3, because they're like, oh, we're to bring Danny in, you know, I mean, I mean, it's it just feels a bit, a bit stupid to me. As much as I like it, and it's well handled, I do, the timing is just stupid, that it's the third episode of, of Series 3, and he just dies, like, it's kind of lazy writing. Um, if they'd have killed him off maybe later in the series, like, perhaps towards, like, or in the end of the series, like, or towards the middle, like, maybe in a couple of episodes on, that might have made sense. And it, Or if this was, like, a, an, a series with, like, six episodes, that would have made more sense. But no, um... It is stupid. And it's a shame, because Douglas Henschel deserved to stay on for longer. I don't think he even wanted to leave. He was just, he was just written out. I mean, I thought he was doing a good job in Series 3. Um... Yeah, no, obviously they've, they've they've just decided to kill him off <laughs> for no reason. Um, but yeah, no. Also, they they kind of the way the way they portray Helen in this is, um, you know, she's the mad scientist, but she's she's just an utter bitch. I mean, I like Julia Aubrey as Helen in this. She's she's good. Um, the whole listen to my voice thing, you know, doesn't need to keep saying it every time, you know. Um, and the destruction of the arc is handled really well. Um, the music is great, especially for the scenes of Nick Cutter. The the ending is really powerful and emotional, and it's such a shame because he, I mean, even Lester, he says, "Get this man an ambulance now." You know, he didn't. I mean, he didn't really like Cutter, but given the choice, he given the choice between life or death, he wouldn't want him to die. <laughs> um, uh, Sarah's good. She doesn't take a major role in this, but. At least not till the end. Um, she's she's good though for what she has to do. Um, Jenny's quite good. Um, but she does again don't, doesn't really take on a major role in this episode. Connor and Abby are good, and um, yeah, and oh Sid and Nancy, oh those two little um creep, those two little dygdodons, um that they adopt, and then Abby's like, I've got one here, and then Connor opens up this little basket with one, and she's like, what do we do? And he's like, we keep them. <laughs> so I thought it was really um, that was really sweet and we'll see more of them throughout the series as well yeah ah <laughs> oh, but no um, I think it's I think it's a rather rather good episode um, but it's obviously caused a lot of controversy because they killed off the main character in the third episode of a series which has ten episodes so um, there's a lot of filler there's a lot of stuff which um, feels odd to me. Like, the timing of Nick Custer's death is pointless. Like, you couldn't have waited 
a few more episodes maybe if you wanted to kill him off then. Why kill him off in the third episode? It doesn't make sense. Um, like I said, the music's great. Um, the opening sequence is um, is interesting. I suppose that's Helen testing how far, how much these clones can do. Like she's like, listen to my voice, jump, and so the the cleaner guy runs and jumps off the building and lands smashed into the into the glass. It's quite an interesting sequence to watch, I have to say. Um, yeah, I I really think that. Cutter's death, as much as I like it, it is dramatic and it's emotional and it's well done. Um, it's just the timing that is the big problem here. Um, I kind of wish they played the music Tom dies, but the music they have is nice. Um, but yeah, it's an episode episode that really kind of baffles me. I don't really know what else to say. Um, I like the creatures, the CGI is all good. Um, and the you know the anomaly. Uh, it's all good. Um, like I said, it's nice to have a creature that isn't as threatening. And um, the whole thing about Helen coming into the Ark is just to, to to kill Nick is basically because she thinks he he sanctioned the creation, he sanctioned the um, production of the of the creation of the future Predators, which of course Nick wouldn't do. This shows how mad Helen is, I suppose. But um, yeah, episode three is a weird one. Um, it's good, it's good, but it's not. I don't think it's a masterpiece by any means. I think it's it's good. So I don't really know what to rate this. I don't know what to rate it. Also, um, that journalist guy coming back. I don't see the point of him being in it. I mean, they, they've already got enough going on at this series. That, you know, they don't they don't need um they don't need this this guy coming back in. Um, but, but yeah, no, um, that that element, that subplot gets explored a bit more in the, the next couple of episodes as well. Um, as for episode three, um, it's sort of filler in the first half. The second half is big and dramatic, um, but it's just ill-timed. The death of Nick Cutter is ill-timed, and it's sad to see him go because I liked him as a character, and as a leader, he was great. I mean, although in series three, he hasn't really done much, so it's... It's kind of pointless even having him in the series because in episode one he actually contributed. He did a fair amount. He, I mean, he was a bit depressed, obviously, about Stephen. But um, yeah, then episode two he took a bit of a back seat. He just stayed in the arc for most of the episode. And then episode three he he dies. So yeah, um, it's kind of pointless having Nick Cutter in the series anyway. Um, but uh, for what it's worth, I think episode three is well made. Uh, it's the writing could have been better. Structurally, it's just like, yeah, you know, the first half doesn't really have much to do with uh, the main kind of stuff within the arc. Like maybe we sh we should have had more more stuff in the arc. Maybe this episode should have been primarily set in the arc. Although the oh the the, the directors are cute, they are cute. But maybe maybe they could have um, come through in the arc instead of the hospital. Um, it seems pointless them going to the hospital and com coming back. Like, I think this episode should have taken place in the arc, just primarily. Then, that would have made it really, really dramatic when it blew up. I mean, we're in we're in the, the arc for half the episode, um, which is fine. Um, it's better than you know series five, episode four, when they're in the arc for the whole episode um, with those little bugs. But anyway, I'll get to that one later. Um, yeah, I haven't got much else to say about the episode. Um, I'm probably going to give it... Uh, um, at a stretch... I'll give it an 8 out of 10. generous and giving it an 8 out of 10 but it's it's more close to a 7 it's sort of just peaking into an 8 it's just that 
it doesn't quite stitch together like, say, you know, with the death of Stephen, because Stephen, with his death, at least it was built up over the series, over series two, it was built up. Um, also, Tom's death uh, in series one was really, really well done as well. Even though Tom is a character we've only known not very long, he, his death was really quite powerful because it was the first character to die in the series. So, yeah, Cutter's death is uh, is, is a weird one. Um, so, yeah, and with that, we, we say goodbye to Nick Cutter. Douglas Henshaw is now out of the show. Probably for good. So, um, yeah, very sad. Very sad to see him go. Team leader. So, yeah, this is really when the team really begins to fall apart. Yeah, the, the Primeval team begin to fall apart, like, from this moment. Yeah, but no, um, yeah, that's all I have to say about Series 3, Episode 3. Tune in next time when I review Series 3, Episode 4. And until then, thank you for watching, and I'm Mr. Toddus11. See ya.